Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting, interesting, and amazing propaganda cast with me, host in Pearl Lane, the one and only master of propaganda. He was like defender of the fatherland, off here to a one one on Pekino. Still, mate, in the northwest, it is Rickley fighting for the British Empire, the Commonwealth. You have the 53rd Infantry Division task with holding this particular stretch of the front line as German forces under Alfred Jodicus Quack, we'll just call him Alfred. Pushes forwards here under cover of night with the 26th Panzer Division. We got double sappers, double pioneers, and grenadiers. The double pioneer start is back, being the popular opening for the Wehrmacht. Captain Kratz have once more largely been sort of pushed to the wayside. Not completely forgotten, not entirely abandoned, just not a priority. You might be wondering why did he pop into this building first before grabbing, just in case that Alfred was rushing the building. Yes, since again, as I've mentioned a couple of times on previous episodes when it comes to this map, currently a lot of this map is just focused around these buildings and the few points they cover. So there's a bit of an incentive to rush them. Again, there's a, probably one of the few issues remaining with the map, in my opinion. It's just the way these buildings can sort of dictate a lot of stuff there. But enough about that. MU40 following up with Alfred, Pioneers in Norfolk. Section out there for Rickley, heading northwards there with the Lee Enfields. Sappers got the fuel and again popping in there. Constant paranoia there around that particular position. Got the fuel points, helps in his sandbags, Bart Why he Alfred taking no chances. MD4 almost done. Pioneer special Norfords and Southfords. I mean, overall, I'd say a fairly standard capping order here. MD42 and crew available. is backing off, subs going the center, and we got the MD42 team already there with the Lafette tripod, as was known there for the MD42 and the MD34 as well. The North is over the Pioneers. Pioneers in the South have been caught up with the Sappers. Another section away there for Rickley. Got the Southern at midpoint here as well. Does, of course, leave the fuel point a bit more to be pushed here by the British forces if he's not careful. Of course, he might be hoping that Rickley thinks that's going to be too difficult. There's always that bit, you know, going on in the back of your head. Sam's going to flank in here. Spot the Indy 4 2 team turn around. Me, what's up? Same from the other side here. Lightly, of course, here. Another going to going to So he's likely to be pushing for a fast Achtard. Very much a popular thing out of a lot of Wehrmacht players. Sam's a copy the Indy 4 2 then, part because Jenkins there, for some reason, got on the wrong end of it. Always a bit annoying when that does happen. Like sometimes one guard will for some reason split off from the rest of the squad and obviously, you know, do so in a way that is very detrimental to the entirety of the squad. Second guard is out here so far for Alfred. Another section in the for Rickley. No son of a battle group yet, though at this stage. Australian defense is looking less likely. Could be heavy armor, could be Indian artillery. Machine they're setting up here. Catch the section out in the open. Panzer Gun Company of Alfred, so you have fairly standard Wehrmacht opening here, which is the two Pioneers, two Grenadiers, MD42 into Fast Tech. Fairly standard again, you've got some players going for the heavy to one for the officers' quarters, but others again do prefer just, you know, pushing out those Panzer Grenadiers or Jaegers a bit faster and not committing terribly to the Grenadiers, even though they do perform better now. Section caught here, meanwhile, got section occupying the house here. Was a nice position to find on the grenadiers here. Sandbags done just in time. Good luck there for Alfred. Machine gun here with some light grenadiers. Support continue to form up here. The flanks are exposed. We got flamethrower teams here for Rickley. The number two flamethrower looking to exploit that. Unless, of course, he walks into the new fluid too. Nearly avoids getting hosed here. Finding continues in the center and up north here. Pioneers going for the cutoff point. So a bit of back and forth here. Between command posts there for Rickley. Grenadiers withdrawing. Pioneers spotted here. He's rounding into the sapper flank here. Note this time around, Rickley does split up the sappers. Obviously, anticipating he's going to try and, you know, stop both sapper sections with a single MD42. So, obviously, for Rickley, the goal is to make sure that can't happen. There you go. Panzer going to the Alfred. He could also transfer out one of the grenadiers, squad for another one a bit faster. MD42 setting up here. Sappers can to sneak around there. Sappers bits as well here. So a lot going on here, a lot of manoeuvring there. Goes Sapper's now pushed towards the centre, threatening the fuel point as well here by extension. Pioneers pushed straight on for the fuel point here, and further is, you know, committing to a fairly aggravating tactical strategy there out of Alfred. We got the Panzer Gunners ready there with the Sturmgewehr. Sturmgewehr 44. Assault Rifle 44. Was the full title. Translated full title. 
That capture point is being lost. And this is the sappers. Sounds me and catch in the section here with the Sturmgewehre ripping into the near pack 45 outfit. Obviously concerned about a fast Humber or anything like that out of Rickley. And he's in fact going for the Humber. So very much again highlights to some extent like, you know, how much they are aware of the various positions and moves and what could be the most devastating here. Section being fought being caught with the crossfire between the two sections here. I feel like Alfred is perhaps pushing the Panzers a bit awfully aggressively. They'll also get why he's doing it. Because we can keep the munitions point or the cutoff point being secured. Kind of makes it a bit harder here from connecting the two munitions point. That's it. He also has the centre victory point, so they still connect it. But it's a bit of a theoretical one there. Of course, we're pioneers catching the samples. Flamethrower versus flamethrower. And we got a bunker there far for that, of course, means medics. And he's trying to sneak forwards. Pumps being pushed back. And there go Humber out. This is definitely where things get very uncomfortable here. At least for a brief while for Alfred. As Lumber dive in, dives in. We got the raid package up, lightly and arc as soon as he can, call it in. Hunts out the Kanoni Fitzig ready. And Rick here, you might notice, is not pursuing any further because he is anticipating the pack 40 around this area. I mean, typically, you know, if you've got a vehicle pursuing an infantry squad like that and you have an anti tank, you'll try and set up in a way that, you know, it meets the armored cars and pursues directly on an axis. So, of course, Rickley knowing that, just didn't dive in there. We got Feel Infirmary on the way there. Medic bank upgrade there for Alfred. Humber, Sapsang, 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 Catching the Gurney's Retreat here. Low health. And the Flame for Sapsang is a good chance here that Rickley scores a white pit. Definitely catching Jody Alfred here. Quite extended. Pack 40 is arriving, but in this case it's going to be too late, I think. And the Packy actually kind of draws away fire from the Gurney's. That was actually a really uh, close call there, though. Medic bunker almost done. Panzer's there waiting for the healing pack in trouble. Got the officer's quarters on the way there. Thumbs up in the south. In machine flank for the Humber. They got a six pounder gun there for Rickley. Probably at this point, figuring he could be hit by a fast arc guard. At least he's assuming he has to concern himself about it because he's not seen anything indicating this could be a breakthrough build. It could, of course, still be Luthraff, I think, but it's also possible it's mechanized. And so. You know, left between these two choices, what does Rickley choose? He obviously chooses to live in a world where his opponent might hit him in the act and of course do very, very bad things to him then, if Rickley is prepared. So, fairly sensible choice there out of Rickley. Punch they're catching the section, of course we've got the officer's quarters up here. Officer's quarters should also benefit the Arctrads. I'll start immediately veterans one and be able to get veteran T2 and 3 faster. Still, good map to from Rickley so far. We got training on for the infantry. Very good. He's also gone for heavy armor barley with the rigorous vehicle training. Once they've been caught out in the open, Humber racing in. Sam is going at it. South here, Pioneers, machine gun teams, and Grandiers all going for a bit of a broader push here. Pack hiding out there. Bit of an ambush in the middle of the bloody road. So, Jodicus there, aka Alfred, aka Quack, is saving up here for the Achter, the 232. Humber there blasting with his auto cannon. Later, Humber armored Casper would be upgraded with a 3700 gun there, so to say what's on the Stuart Light tanks and whatnot. In fact, the British weren't general big fans of upgunning the armored cars where possible. Pani is being blasted, Glenny is forced back. Arctad out here with the two cent into auto cannon. Sappers that push back the Pioneers. Panzer is moving up here. Arctad, of course, Vexens 1, courtesy of the officer's quarters. Sappers is spotted. Good chance of wipe here if Alfred goes in. And the Pioneers got wiped. But he gets the saps and returns. It's not quite terrible that pack though. Pulls away the Humber. Mine goes off in the Arc died. Great here for Rickley. He probably wasn't anticipating to like damage the engine in the armored car, but he did. And that means, you know, the initial momentum of the Arc died very much, you know, just kind of peters out. Like someone just, you know, pulled the air out of his little balloon. Ach nein, mein Balloon. Mein Ach shake Balloon. This is scheiße. I'd be complaining to the Oberkommando about this one. We have vehicles ready to be deployed. Explain to, of course, Panther Production. So he is going to go for the Panzer Company, though he's not quite able to build it yet. 
Sounds like a machine we've got on its own. Samples on the way there for Rick to help repair stuff. Still some time before we can see even tech up here. Guns catching the section there. Six pound gun coming up the center here. After they fixed up, Punch was there. Quick getting merged up with the Grenadiers. Very good there. Topping up. Thumbs up there to Alfred. Gives the merge there. Solid ability. Pack them around the church. Arctic up and the church. Got the six pounder gun moving in here. Obviously, if you're gonna like do something like this, you try one like you know, assume your opponent has an anti tank and covering the main road. So he's probably should have that down here, or even like try to move it up here. I think just parking out here was obviously the easiest thing to do, but also the one that like you know, assuming your opponent's gonna have at least one anti tank gun, which they almost always will at some point, unless you're against I know me, like you know, having something parked out there is gonna get like blasted by an anti tank gun. So tactically, a bit inadvisable. We do get there the Panzer Company out of Alfred up north there. Humber spotting the Pioneers, even laying down the Schutzen Mina. And quickly going out with its auto cannon there. Good chance of the Pioneers, in fact, getting wiped here. He has replaced the other Pioneers, but he's going to need to replace these as well. Good wipe there out of Rickley. Got the Grenadiers caught by the Sampers quickly dispatched. See Arctic coming up here, waiting Pioneers to repair that. Map control wise, Rick continues to so far lead the dance here. As Alfred keeps making slightly unfortunate maneuvers here and there. And we got the Crusade anti aircraft tank out for Rickley, calling it in. It was basically a Crusader tank with the Warforce 40mm anti aircraft gun mounted on it. I think it was also the only British anti aircraft tank to do that. They'd later on just moved to like multiple smaller guns instead of the Warforce. Humber raising in there. So there you go, moving in. Obviously, it's a more aggressive move. He had a really, in some respects, much more punishing for Alfred's infantry. But it also denies him a lot of resources then taking up. So, Alfred pushing for Panther Force in Panthers. Will leave Wrigley now with the Crusade anti aircraft tank, perhaps feeling not quite as great. Of course, it can withdraw them from resources if he has to take up. He may have to, of course, but... It's still worth pointing out here, there is a bit of a disadvantage he's managed to put himself into with this move. At least down the road, because again, his opponent does have the Panzer Company up, so he's not far away from armor. The question causes for now, how much time can Rickley buy? Can like he manage like, you know, make the Crusader anti aircraft tank make a big enough impact on Alfred to like, you know, make it worth the cost now? Because if he can't, obviously things are about to get a lot less great for him. Hitting the fuel point there, we got Starstorm for Alfred, thumbs up. Of course, had his opponent gone for Luftwaffe, this would also been pretty great to shoot down the aircraft, but he didn't. Section there with the Bren guns holding up the Gunnadira. Humbug, Crusader flanking in it, catching here. Alfred's exposed flank, pack forward. There was covering it, but apparently actually did get hit on Crusader. Another here there, Pack 40 doing its part for Deutschland. Six pounder gun pulling back. Got the three pound mortar teaming up there, three inch. Actually. And we got the Star Storm here, hardened veteran Torpen. Over the 26th Panzer du Schorn. With the G33s and MG42s. And we got a mine there spotted. Got mining caused by Rickley. A good mind sweeping by Alfred. After that, Pack 40 starts to move towards the center. Needs to get the fuel pump back. Then, in fact, he needs to really get parts of the map back here from Rickley. Map control definitely favoring the British player. Quite actively at the moment. And this building is about to collapse. Alfred, of course, uses this, starts pulling back his Panzer Grenadiers. No more to fire here, threatening. Alfred's push up the center. Ooh, six pounding gun here getting shot at. It's enough he did pop this building. It might have been a misclick as sometimes you can have these two buildings, but he definitely benefited a lot more from this building as it covers this area much better than this building. And there you go, Humber slammed out the pack 40. Might need to get out of in time. Though it did help that the stars were not there to act as spotters in a better sense. Southside, Arctic engaging. 
Section falls back and no cyber cultism gurneys poking in there. Alpha closing in either Panda 4 or a Panther. And we got another six Panagani out of Riki. Obviously, at this point, I imagine the threat of the Panther is starting to weigh fairly heavily on his mind. He actually calls in another Crusader anti aircraft tank, so perhaps not that heavily. But we'll have to see. Mine's being laid down, mine's being spotted, more or less at the same time. Awkward. Disable one, wreck the other. Got the second Crusader tank strike up north. We do get the Panther for Alpha. The Panzerkampfwagen 5 Ausführung D. Doesn't they catch the Crusader? Or, well, more technically speaking, getting caught by the Crusader and quickly forced away there. Pack 40 flank with the other one. Got the Arkad there. Not able to do much either. Alfred really badly needs that Panther in soon. He meanwhile, Sex Moon catching the pack for the worst part here. And that means Rick Vector sees it turning against Alfred alongside the two Sex Panther guns here. Further complicating matters for the Germans and the Turn Six Panther to show machine moving up. Granny's running as well here. Panzer is Panzer's car attacking. Look to get that pack back. Humber's raising in. Panther's arrived. Crusader tank, you've got in trouble. Starstorm managed to survive. Gonna move the Granny's to merch, I imagine. Then he is in trouble. Arctar being forced back. Panther catching the Crusader anti aircraft tank. Now Rickley knows Deutschland is knocking. Up north, he finally continues. He's running in there, grabbing the pack here. Mine explodes. Arctar, oh, Crusader there with the damage engine. Pat the seized by British forces. Narrowly managed to send a Panther around there. And Gandhi has got white. Oh dear, this is a real mess. Now we've got the six pound moon, Panther dashing forces, smoke deployed by the Hunter crew cover there. Charging in there, clearly not concerned about potential snares here. Starts to moving in. Getting caught up in the anti tank guns though. We got Mechanals out there, Alfred. We got the Arctar now switching in as well there. Got one the anti tanks at courtesy of the Star Storm. Panther is counter attacking. Absolutely hectic stuff here. Panther moving in. Got the Humber. Rickley is getting taken to the cleaners here. He underestimated Alfred. He underestimated the power of Deutschland. Panther keeps pushing forward here. Crusader down. A massive fireball. The only Crusader that's going to go on now is to hell. But they got the other Crusader anti of tank. And he lost an anti tank. And there's well to the Germans. Massive blow here to Rickley. He was really ahead and now he's behind so need to get these anti tanks either secured or destroyed but definitely needs to do either of the two there panther needs to be pulled back for a pair since it's already vet 22 i'd say that's pretty good there Fresh wave troops there for Rickley. Six pounder guns almost being done. I'm guessing he can try and set up for the Black Prince next. I mean, he kind of like, you know, shot himself in the foot there, but coming so heavily in the Crusade anti tank So this, that was kind of like an all in home to finish the match fast. But unfortunately for him, Alfred was pushing for that Panther, and that left Rickley very much out to dry. And now I can't see easily follow up with the 17 pounder gun or a swarm of Grants in Crusader tanks. This Definitely reeling a bit there. Mine's being laid down. Rebuilding his forces here. Star Storm there, hit a mine. British forces swiftly advancing. Upgrade some more Bren guns. He's got plenty of munitions there, Mr. Rickley. Plenty of munitions. He also got the Star Storm assault package there for Alfred. Probably more because he wanted the mech and assault ability faster rather than because he really felt like he needed the assault package. This is like, you know, 1 CP compared to the 3 CPs of the Vesper. Quick grenade there. Another push to Rickley, despite everything, is undaunted. He launches another assault there for the Gloria Britannia. Men charging in, sections lining up. The South Arctic there trying to keep the south side clear. Alfred at this point would definitely benefit from more Starstorm actually, but also maybe a Panzer IV here. Arctic going for the Sappers. Panzer they're catching the section. I mean, he could also go for a Panzer going to be a squad more, but Starstorm certainly would be the bit sexier choice. 
Anderson has been swarmed by the British forces. Glenys ramming stars to my busy elsewhere. And we got the Arctic, of course, clipping into the wings there of Rickley. There you go. Pack crew very much uh, dismissed. Got the stars from the field. And that, of course, made up effectively of Grenadiers entirely. Of course, again, he's very actively using his merge ability there. So, thumbs up to Alfred on that one. 379 versus 246. Rickley still has the lead in certain respects, but in other cases, again, cracks are starting to appear. The facade is starting to slip. And the Norfords, puny advancing as well. Arc up machine guns, start swimming in there. South side, pounds they're busy. Heading for the northern side of the Pioneer, Panther heading out as well. Panther 4 there for Alfred, very good. Sehr gut. Spotting for mines. Yeah, Alfred there is definitely getting back in the field now. Big time. They're still not upgrading the other two sections. Despite having training, they would benefit massively from having some light machine guns. And there you go. Black Prince up there for Rickley. This point it almost feels like in you know, a last desperate bid here to turn this around. If that Black Prince fails, then Rigley's going to be really in a bad spot. Panda Falls almost done. Zapper section wing in there. And in the center there, Starstorm holding up against advances. You do get a rough grenade off here. Great shot there, half the Starstorm scored. Evaporated, Pioneers wiped again. Pioneers falls back as well. Panda Falls moving four bats and in the penalty machine gun. Very good to that. And you to catch the sections around the center. Also got that mortar, and of course, in this regard, Alfred does not have any of it at all. No need lampers, no mortars, and certainly no Vesper. Punching in the Sampsi. Stumke there, they're absolutely letting loose here. Machine almost taken up with the mortar. Up north here, Panda 4 rolling in, catching the section. We could see a wipe here. If Rickley is just sufficient and lucky, or oh, Alfred is sufficient and lucky here. Take chances are looking very good now. Six pound are going to get in the. Arctic forcing it back. Almost got it. It's down to just poor. Dan is there. Out of Liverpool. And down he goes. Panther the diving after the sappers. That was his upgraded section. That, so that definitely hurts really there a fair bit. But now we do have the Churchill Black Prince out. A tank that... Well... Actually, saw the service. They made a few prototypes, and that was it. It was basically not a great concept. So the British Army just didn't go ahead with it. Black Prince holding forty sections. Have some new six pounder gun moving in. Grenades have been chucked. Stars from they're taking massive damage from that grenade. Great there for Rickley. Panther, Panther one gain the six pounder gun here. Black French keeps moving forward. Grenadiers are getting mauled. Section there we go. Double grenade the Panther four here. Damn in the engine. Alfred definitely went in too far there with the tanks without any support, and he's going to pay the price. Here's the Black Prince is on the scene. Panther does get up a good shot here, but on its own, it's going to need a lot more shots here. Pack forty on the scene, but just not enough here. And there we go, massive damage on the Panther. Alfred here getting absolutely hung out to dry here. Wow! That was really lucky though. Multiple bounces off the front llama though. Almost got the Black Prince! Woo! Punch with the flanking in, I think in part just to try and force things back there. And there we go, scores a flanking shot. Rickley's. Hope they just went up in flames. It does score a white, which does mean he's a bit more ahead in the infantry now. But still, that was far from great there for Rickley. Though again, he at least he did get the Panda Four and a Panzer Grenadier score, but not really what you want to trade your Black Prince for either. So how will Alpha respond to this? More Star Storm Panda Fours, Panzer Grenadier. Who knows? 
On that matter, how would Rick respond? We do get Light Beacon with Drone of Fit, and we got Radionet now. Grenades in the Star Storm, we got Star Assault there. Armored car, they're pursuing there, hunting down the retreating sappers. We got grenades being chucked here, I think, in the last desperate bid here. Six pound gun to the rescue. Hunter, and of course, got that Panther intensity to repairs. Alfred's also just floating a fair bit of resources here. Plenty of manpower and fuel could go for another Panther, though. I don't think there's too much need for that right now. <laughs> another Panther force instead, what we get. That's definitely not a bad choice, of course, at this stage. Armored side skirts could be a pretty good upgrade. The ability is ready. Just to make them a wee bit tougher there. Fixing up the Panther. Panzerkampfwagen 5. Fun fact about the Panther, they were actually pretty quick to start developing the Panther 2 project because it turns out the side armor was fairly weak. Of course, they then figured out they could just add these armored side skirts and they'd fix most of the issues, obviously at a much, much lower cost. Than developing the Panther 2 project. So that was quickly put on hold. Once someone again line. figured that out. But it was something that actually got fairly fun development, actually. And that too. And they would actually, I think, use the turret that had been developed for the Panther 2 for a later model of Planned Panther, known as the Panther Model F. Fun fact there. And did have some fairly fancy plans for the Panther at the wall last night. He had like, you know, something approaching a very, very rudimentary autoloader. But again, very rude. Crude and rudimentary. After that, they're moving in. Panther 4 moving up as well here. Armored sides got to be great here for Alfred. But at this point, more infantry would also be a lot of good. Like, he's definitely falling behind him, Rickley. And honestly, for Rickley at this stage, pushing for infantry like foot guards could also be, I think, a very good move here versus Alfred, actually. There's a lot that he could pursue, but so far, fortunately for Alfred, Rickley isn't pursuing it. But admittedly, same for Rickley. Alfred's pursuing a lot of opportunities that could also make things worse for him. Enemy nice flank to the Rafghan here. Panther going on there on its own. Panther from the center, they're again fairly unsupported. In fact, Alfred is committing both of his tanks without any infantry support, of course. This is aided by the fact that again he's only got two squads of infantry. Alfred finally, I think, realizing what needs or what is needed, and that is more infantry. So thumbs up there. Some elite star storm. Could follow up with some more additional grenades than just like have more options just providing cheap merges for the star storm is going to have and also just have some more infantry support. That could be like an honest idea there for Alfred, but we'll have to see. In the end, more star storm is still more star storm. There you go, second squad of star storm out there. Sappers advancing in the southeast, starts to engage them by the section as well there. Quick rough grenade there. Panther with the Sappers advancing, and Sappers pushed a section pushed back by the stars. We got the stars assault ability there, unloading the MD42 there of North Panther moving in, and we got another Panther 4 there for Alfred up the star stop. Really pushing hard here, and Wrigley is just saving up for another Black Prince. Hoping that that one will, you know, do a better job than the first one and not just, you know, proceed to get knocked out by the Germans. Starts in there quick withdrawing, probably for some healing. Second Panther almost done. Honestly, at this point, though, with all the Stars and the Panther Force and the Panther and Officers Quarters would be a great upgrade. And of course, with multiple Panther Force, Armored Side Skirts would also be a very good, you know, upgrade to have for him, honestly. As for Rickley, I mean, team weapon training would actually be good. Like, you know, for the anti tank guns, they would benefit a lot from it. Mort as well, there. It's a bit surprised if Rickley hasn't considered that, but obviously, at this point, his eyes are clearly on the Black Prince. There you go, second Panzer already. Alfred in the 26th Panzer Division has managed to build up a decent force here. Victory point lost. Jürgen, sat with some museum, you're eating Vax food. Oh. Get. 
So definitely playing a bit more cautiously now, Mr. Alfred, waiting for the right time to strike, or waiting for Rigby to strike so he can then counter-attack. I do feel like he'd be a bit more active at least, though again, that would require again having a bit more infantry to be active with. There you go. Both stars are from North Fatigue, Cat in the section. Sap is absolutely mauling them. In the center, the British force slowly poking in. And we do have the second Black Prince here for Rickley. Sap is then sending more by the Panther Force. We got six pounding guns responding to that. Stars moving Cat in the Sap. There you go. Nice flank here. Could try with the grenade assault. I don't think Alpha's going to try and use the Star Summers one for that for the Sappers here. Might only be tricky to predict where they're going to go. But I think it would be worth a shot just for a chance at a wipe here. South side here, Sabs catching the pack 40 here. It's so like a six pounder gun. It is a six pounder gun. Dispatching armored cars and panzers. Other panther flying northward. Stars moving in to grab the north side here. Black French moving in, supported by the six pounder guns. Laying siege and waste to the sand here. Panther 4 getting flanked with the six pounder guns. Things are getting hectic here. Alfred put too much emphasis on the north actually with no reserves in the center. We do get the armored side skirts. Thumbs up. And we also get Mechano Assault here. Panther now is the one. Getting hammered again here by British forces. Black Prince, six pounder guns going at it. Panther force got the armored side skirts up. Pack forming up there as well. Arctic down in the southern point here. Panther 4 flanking from the north side. Catching Britney in the bad spot. Panther again narrowly survives at the east level. The immense luck here. For Alfred with that Panther. That's the second time it survives with next to nothing left. Packs are moving in. Sabas can attacking Panzers. Are getting caught in the smoke that they're lost in the fog. Almost got the Panther 4 there. Got it! Arctad swinging in there. We got stars from north side. They're alone healthy. Hacks are being wiped and wiped again and again. Arctad hitting a mine goes down. Alfred and Rigley are bleeding out here, but Alfred says a larger force. We got the stars from the catch and the mortar crew. What? Right? Somehow all the shots are just not hitting the crew. They're somehow all just hitting the mortar tube, which is bizarre. To say the least. Rifling it off here. Turn these men against the sappers. Sam's in trouble. We need to pull back the Panther 4 and the stuff from this point. We've probably got more pioneers on the way there for Alfred and the 26 Panzer Sean. We got another 6 Panther gun for Rickley. Ace Panther being rolled to the front line. 98 points left for Rickley. Clock is ticking and it's ticking fast. Also, probably want to merge here. Oh. Okay, there we go. Sending in the Panther, though heavily damaged again. Then now, actually, two Black Prince. MD42 team there. And Star Storm just laying down here, hunting the mountain sappers. We're in the part that the Black Prince is providing his support there and forcing Alfred to man in the center there. The enemy has 75 points at falling. Bring up the Entertainers, bring up the Star Storm. Black Prince still coming here. Starstorm being sent in. Effectively to die on their own here. If he's going to send them in like that. We do get the Pentacle bombing a bit here. We do also have the six pounder gun. But even there, I feel like this is pretty risky. And there we go. Massive damage. Pentacle getting focused down. Going for the southern victory point. May also want to sneak up someone on the north side of anything. Great kick will still benefit from a bit more infantry, to be honest. More sections, more sappers, just something. I mean, obviously, we could take up for some foot guards. That would still be good as well. But I do think he just needs a few more troops here. As for Alfred, one infantry, honestly, still wouldn't hurt either. Some Panzer gun here, some candy here, some Star Storm, you name it. Just more, you know, fighting capable infantry. And there you go. Wrigley's got the saps up north here. Section South Court. Enemy for to the Somps Truppen, Panther is hanging back. Now get back into fight. Enemy forces have captured a victory point. Black Prince on the move, supported by Saps and the six-pounder gun. 
37 is 209. The enemy holds all victory points. Triple camp here, pack 40 setting up there. Oh, and ambushing the Black Prince at fairly close range from the side. Gun is moving in here. Sap is charging in. Up north here, Stossman's winning versus Sappers, but East level stars to them. Absolutely will beat those Sappers, Sally, and steal their lunch. Black Prince there falling back, obviously a bit concerned. Panther going for flank here. Staying clear of most of the entertainers, though. Rick does have some other supporting here. Anti tank cleared out, going to get destroyed. You know, he could cruise it. Panther flanking him, but now we got anti tangents flanking the Panther. Alfred floating a fair bit of resource in the southeast. Starsome got the southern point. We got 3782. We have lost the sector. Almost got the northern point again. Looks like Rick is moving in to intercept there. Got the more still work there for the British Empire. There you go. Ace Starstorm sees this north point here once more. Got the Panther there fixed up. And we got the Black Prince in North for tea. Yeah, starts them as soon as they see that withdraw, as they obviously don't have any way of dealing with that. And we got to get a second Panther up for Alfred. Highlighting at this point just how much of a nuisance this Black Prince is. Graf grenades there definitely force a full withdrawal there. We got 22 points left though. Rickley, I think, still not taking up. No, sir. Just one to tank guns, I imagine. He's up to three again. Alfred lining up his armor slowly. Who cancelled the Panther for another Panther 4? Victory point lost. Sapper section moving in. And thinking back. A Panzer fears field ready. Got the Panther 4 ready. And we got another Crusader and Tank of Tank out here for Rickley. Honestly, I. Armor training would of course be a good if he hasn't gone for that already. Pants looking for northern flank here. At this point, the way Rickley's playing, I mean, a neither level would be an honestly good investment if Alfred just like, you know, blasts all these bunch that into tank into these narrow urban corridors. Panther going for flank here. Does some forced away here. Anton trying to deal with the Panther here. Black Prince up north being caught. Panther taking heavy damage. We've got Mechanal Sword Poppy out of Alfred. Going for a flank here. Crusader, Black Prince going towards his star storm with MG4 support. He's going and hitting the real lines of Rickley. Panther continuing around here, but there go. Caught with the turn to tank guns. All three of them, in fact. Caught a near point blank range. Panther four flanks. Panther bounces another double volley. There is like something insane like the foul from that Panther. Machine. Oh, star storm. White. Huge wipe there for Rickley. Very painful there for Alfred. East Black Prince here, almost got the Panther, again. Does he get it for once, or does it survive? No, he actually got it. Massive blow, their party is getting mauled. I don't know what went wrong there for Alfred, but that was just all his pioneers. He has almost accrued all of Ridley's anti tank guns, but there's about Panther Force moving in. No infantry support here, because still hasn't gone for a lot of it. And for trying to escape here, Black Prince though narrowly misses. Such a close call. And there he goes. All this happens he's up the stars from Northern Point. We got more pioneers for Alfred. He says the machine and this roller could be on the center point here. Pioneers, Swift advance by. here by Rickley. He's sending in the Crusader from the Northern Point. Pulling back the Panther for some repairs. Wrecking anti-tank guns. Starsome there. Oh, we got the veterans one ability there for increased rate of fire. And that's the A Starsome wipe. And they also dropped the MG42 to add insult to injury. 12 points left here. Another Pantafor for Alfred. Oh, he cancels it. 8 points left. Six. Rickley needs to get on these points fast. Four. Then he's about to get wiped out. Three. White. MG4 sitting up here. Two. One. 
And that is it. GG game over. A loss for Ricky, a victory for Alpha. That was a really close battle, but um, yeah. His reliance on Collins, I think, kind of is what, kind of, to an extent, I think, cost Rick. If I had that, he could have just had more infantry, I think, in several junctures, and I think it all's been a much better spot there. Alfred, though, was certainly close to losing it, but at least he teched, I think, better, and did actually, some, to some extent, have more infantry at times, but again, he would also benefited more from it. Still, rather British fight here in Pekino Stalemate, so if you enjoyed it, hope you learned something from it. If you did, subscribe, like, share, comment. This is Imperial News, and cheers, and see you all tomorrow for another episode. Bye, everyone.